principles of postponement. This is something that I don't believe is covered in the textbook. But this is something that's important when you're talking about absorbing variation within a, a supply chain. Um, when we go to systems theory, Ashby's first law of systems is that only ver flexibility, only variation can, only variety can absorb variety. So when we have increased variation, external variation, we have to max, we have to increase the amount of variety within the system. And, and basically, let's say uh, we're selling cars. Um, Ford, you know, only only sold, you know, his famous saying is you can have any car you want as long as it's black. Let's say he suddenly wants to sell red and yellow cars. Well, all of a sudden, he may have a huge demand for red cars that he didn't know about. So the so to absorb that extra variation, you have to be able to basically make more, increase the ability to make more red cars. The other way to do that within a organizational context is to limit the external varieties, the e external variations effect on the system by, by saying, hey, I don't care if you want red cars, we're just gonna, we're just gonna scrap red cars and we're just gonna go back to only making black cars. Obviously, when you do this in a competitive system, you end up losing sales to someone else who says, hey, I can make you a red car, okay? But they, these are two strategies that you can do. So you either increase the ability of the system to absorb the, the extra variation through flexibility, or you basically minimize the amount of variation that we're going to address by basically saying, we're only gonna make black cars, we're done. So in principles of postponement, what you do is you modularize and you use common components as far up the supply chain as possible before you create multiple different designs. Boeing used to do this quite a bit in which they, they, would, they would offer you uh, seven or eight types of seats, different colors and, and everything else. But um, eventually, when I went to Boeing, they found out that it was very expensive to maintain all these things. So what they said is, okay, we're going to offer you a plane when it's pretty much finished. And then when it's finished, we're going to provide modular options to customize the plane. This allowed them to push the the variation as far up the supply chain so that there's less effect on the system as a whole. Obviously, this requires a lot of design and a lot of supply chain work and a lot of manufacturing work to make sure that you can do this. You can't just do it all of a sudden. You have to design the modularity in your products, see, in finished or semi-finished form. So it, what this does, this delays committing raw resources, labor and fixed assets, assets as far into the cycle as possible. So this is a quick description here. Um, we have raw materials, and here we have three product lines, fabrication, assembly, finished goods. And what we're gonna do is we're going to only have one product go into fabrication. And then once it's in fabrication, then we're going to modularize it so that we get the three product lines from assembly and finished goods. What this does is this reduces the, the variation Oops, hold on a minute. This reduces the variation here. Whoopsie daisy, hold on a minute. Let me just, I don't wanna, oh, here we go. This reduces the variation from one, from, from three lines, a variation to one variation, to one line. Kind of like your risk pooling. You're basically pooling all the variation on one line instead of three, which allows you to better manage the variation from one line. Okay, this is a very powerful tool for improving the manufacturing of a product as it relates to a supply chain demand. But once again, this takes interface with many different actors with, within a company to be able to get this done. Okay.